In this lesson, we're going to look at how to calculate measures of dispersion, the range, variance, and standard deviation. So why are they called measures of dispersion? This is because the range, variance, and standard deviation look at how the data is spread out. The range is calculated by finding the difference between the largest and smallest value, and then adding one. You may have learned to calculate the range without adding one. We add one because we are measuring the gap between the points rather than the points themselves in psychology. So let's consider the following data set. 11, 15, 16 and 21. Subtract the smallest number from the largest number. So that's 21 minus 11 equals 10. Now add one. 10 plus 1 equals 11, so the range is 11. Variance can tell us more than the range. It's another measure of dispersion. Rather than looking at the extremes of the data set, the variance, S squared, considers the difference between each data point and the mean. You might look at this equation for calculating variance and be a bit apprehensive, don't be. We're going to look at each bit in turn. Do you know what the symbol sigma means? The symbol sigma means the sum of. So let's look at the equation again. What does x with a bar on top mean? x with a bar on top refers to the mean. Now let's look at this data in the table. What is the mean score for the young people? Pause here to calculate this. The mean for the scores for the young people is 26 plus 28 plus 22 plus 30 plus 25 plus 28. And then we divide by six because there's six different scores. And this gives us a mean of 26.5. So what does x refer to in the equation? x refers to each piece of data collected. So look at the table now. Each score is one piece of data. So what are the different x values for the young people? The different x values for the young people are 26, 28, 22, 30, 25 and 28. Now, what do you think N stands for in the equation? N stands for the number of pieces of data. So for the young people, there are six pieces of data. There are six scores for the young people, so N equals six. At the bottom of the equation, it says N minus one. So as there are six scores, N minus one is going to be six minus one which equals five. So this is an equations cheat sheet. It tells you what each part of the equation means. X is each individual data point. X with the bar on top is the mean of the data set. The sigma symbol is sum of, and N is the sample size. OK, let's try and work out variance of this set of data. 1, 2, 2, 3, 4 and 5. You can use a table to help you work out variance. Now you fill in the rest of the data for x. Here is x filled in. Now you need to calculate the mean, which is x with a bar on top for this set of data. So x bar is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 divided by 6 equals 2.83. Now fill this in on the table. Pause here to do this. Here is the table with the mean filled in. Now you can use the third column of your table to work out x minus x bar because you can see that that is in the equation for variance. 
So we're going to do it for each data point. So for the first one, it's going to be 1 minus 2.83, which equals minus 1.83. So pause here to work out the rest of them. Here's the table with x minus x bar filled in. Now, if you look at the variance equation, it has x minus x bar squared, so we need to do that next. I've done the first one for you in the table, and you can see that x minus x bar squared for the first piece of data is 3.35. That's because it's 1 minus 2.83 squared equals 3.35. Now you pause here to work out the rest. Here is the table with x minus x bar squared filled in. Now you need to calculate the sum of x minus x bar squared. So you add up all the figures in the final column. So we work this out by 3.35 plus 0.69 plus 0.69 plus 0.03 plus 1.37 plus 4.71 equals 10.84. The next thing we need to do if we look at the equation is we need to divide all of this by n minus 1. So what is n for this set of data and what is n minus 1? Pause here to think about this. N equals 6 as there are 6 pieces of data. So N minus 1 equals 6 minus 1 equals 5. So S squared equals 10.84 divided by 5, which equals 2.17. We've now calculated variance. This table shows the full calculations altogether for working out variance for this set of data. So what is standard deviation and why do we use it? One problem with variance is that the final answer is a squared number. So it doesn't have the same units as the mean. The standard deviation, because it uses the square root, turns the figure to the same units as the mean. As a consequence, it is easier to make direct judgments about the data set. This becomes important when we're looking at the percentage of scores that fall either side of the mean. For example, when we're looking at normal distribution. Here is an equations cheat sheet. Let's compare variance with standard deviation. You can see that standard deviation is just the square root of variance. Now we're going to look at standard deviation in more detail. Consider the following two data sets. We've got data set one, which is 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. And the mean for this data set is 30. We've also got data set two, which is 10, 20, 30, 14, 50. And the mean for this data set is also 30. But now look at the data a bit more. Although both data sets have a mean of 30, the data is spread much further apart in data set 2. Therefore, data set 2 has a larger standard deviation. Standard deviation is a measure of dispersion, which means it's useful in determining how spread out the data is. For example, if one school has students who end up with a high mean number of UCAS points, and a very small standard deviation. That means that all the students at this school got good A-levels. If a second school has students that have an equally high mean number of UCAS points with a very high standard deviation as well, that means that the students had a much wider range of A-level grades with some getting high grades and some getting much worse grades. Some exam questions on standard deviation might ask you to explain the steps needed to calculate standard deviation. So for the data set 46, 42, 44, 45 and 43, step one would be calculating the mean. 
in this case that would be calculated by 46 plus 42 plus 44 plus 45 plus 43 divided by 5 equals 44. Step 2 is taking away the mean from each value. So each value is like one value is 46 and we might do 46 minus the mean is 44. And we do that for each value. And then we square it. Step three is when you add up all the x minus x bar squared values. In this case, that'd be four plus four plus zero plus one plus one equals 10. In step four, we divide the sum of all the x minus x bar squared values by n minus one. There's five pieces of data here. So n is five and five minus one is four. So in this case, we would be doing 10 divided by 4 equals 2.5. In step 5, we square root it all for the standard deviation. So that's the square root of 2.5, which equals 1.6. As I said, you need to be able to describe these different steps in the exam. As I discussed before, you can use a table to help you calculate standard deviation. So you would write down all your x values, which for this data set is 46, 42, 44, 45 and 43. Then you work out the mean in the second column, which is the same for every single piece of data, uh, which in this case is 44. Then we work out x minus x bar. Then we work out x minus x bar squared. Then we calculate the sum of all of that, which in this case is 10. Then we do n minus 1, which for this set of data, because there's five pieces of data, is 5. And then we do 5 minus 1 is 4. So then we're going to be doing 10 divided by 4. And then we square root all of that. And that leads us to an answer of 1.6. So how can you interpret standard deviation? For data sets that have a normal distribution, the standard deviation can be used to determine the proportion of values that lie within a particular range of the mean value. For normal distribution, 68% of values are less than one standard deviation, one SD, away from the mean value. 95% of values are less than two standard deviations, two SD, away from the mean and 99% of values are less than three standard deviations, three SD, away from the mean. Now let's look at a normal distribution. IQ is normally distributed in the population. Most people have an IQ in the middle. The mean value for IQ is actually 100, and also the median and mode value. 68% of people have an IQ between 85 and 115. An IQ of 85 is only one standard deviation away from the mean, if we remember that the mean is 100. 95% of people have an IQ between 70 and 130. An IQ of 70 is two standard deviations away from the mean. So standard deviation is showing us how spread out the data is. This is a question. A researcher wanted to compare whether people find it easier to recall words with a cue compared to without a cue. They asked the same participants to recall a list of words with a cue and without a cue. They made sure the words were a similar length. The results are given in the table. So we've got condition A, which is without a cue, and condition B, which is with a Q. The mean for condition A is 15.2, and the mean for condition B is 19.4. The standard deviation for condition A is 1.6, and it's 3.75 for condition B. So what conclusions might the researcher draw from the data? Refer to the mean and standard deviations in your answer. So first of all, talk about what the mean shows for three marks, and you can quote the actual data from the table. And then 
show what the standard deviation shows for another three marks here. Pause to try and answer this question. This is a typical student answer to the question and it has some mistakes. The first part's right though. The researcher might conclude from the means that people can recall more words when given a cue compared to without a cue. The mean recall without a cue was only 15.2 words compared to 19.4 words with a cue. So this would get three marks. But the next bit's not quite right. The standard deviation supports this as the standard deviation was bigger with a Q. The reason this is wrong is because standard deviation shows something different to the mean. Standard deviation is a measure of how spread out the data is. So what could they have written? The first part of the student's answer is correct. The mean scores show that participants could recall more words with a Q than without a Q. The mean recall without a cue was only 15.2 words compared to 19.4 words with a cue. So what could they have said about standard deviation to show that it shows how the data is spread out? I've written this in red on this slide. The data shows that when participants are not given a cue, then the number of words recalled is less spread out than when they are given a cue. The standard deviation of 1.6 in condition A compared to 3.75 in condition B shows that the number of words recalled by participants without a cue is more similar in condition A. As the standard deviation is small in condition A, you can see that it must be less spread out. The bigger the standard deviation, the more spread out the data is. Now let's try and work out standard deviation for this data set. We looked at this data set earlier and it's one, two, two, three, four and five. We already found that the variance was 2.17 earlier. So the standard deviation is just the square root of 